Hello everyone, welcome back. In our previous tutorial, we learned about Java programming language and how it was born. We also discussed about popularity of Java programming language. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about life cycle of a Java program. We will create a sample program and understand what are different phases in its life cycle. We will learn what are the various keywords in Java programming language. We will see how do we declare the variables. What are different data types and how to name the variables? What are conventions associated with these? So let's get started. In order to understand the life cycle of Java program, we will actually create a Java program from a console window. On the command prompt, I'm going to use notepad to create a simple program and I name it program.java. In this program, I am going to create a class by name program and this class is going to have a single method called main. This main method is very simple. It is going to print out system.out.println hello world. Once I save this, I see that I have a file called program.java. Now we know that Java is platform independent programming language because once you write your program in any .java file and then you compile it, then this Java file is passed and we generate .class file which contains the bytecode. The bytecode can be executed and is readable by JVM and every operating system has its own JVM. So JVM is platform dependent but due to JVM the Java language has become platform independent. Now let's see this in action. Java C is the command for Java compiler. Here C stands for compiler. Once I write Java C program.java the program gets compiled and we see a dot class file generated. This dot class file contains the bytecode that can be executed in the JVM. JVM stands for Java Virtual Machine. In order to execute this program, we use the Java command again and we type Java program and we see the output hello world. Now let's understand this in more detail. We wrote a program in a Java file whose extension was .java. We compiled it to bytecode and we generated the .class file using the Java C or Java compiler. And then we executed the program in JVM using Java command. In the program that we wrote just now, you might have observed some special keywords like static, void, main, etc. From these, some of the words are Java reserved keywords. For example, class, static, public, etc. Programming languages are characterized by dozens of keywords and different rules of grammar. On same line, Java programming language also has its own set of keywords and then there are grammar rules to write program statements. To understand this better, see the keywords which are displayed on the slide. You might be unfamiliar with most of them today, but trust me, by the end of this course, you will know most of them. Let's understand how do we declare variables in Java. Variables are simply the placeholders to store some kind of data. Java is strongly typed language, which means that before declaring a variable or while declaring a variable, you need to specify its type. Some programming languages are little bit relaxed on this front and then they, where they allow creating or declaring the variables without specifying its type. 
but Java is strongly typed programming language. We declare Java variable by specifying a type followed by the variable name. For example, if I want to declare a variable x, then I write int x. Here int is the data type and x is the name of the variable. We can declare multiple variables on the same statement like int x, y, z. We can also initialize the value while declaring the variables like int x equal to 5, int x is equal to 5, y equal to 10. Once you have declared the variable, you can always change its value and you can assign x equal to 10. This is called variable assignment. There are different data types in Java. Let's talk about primitive data types first. Primitive data types are boolean, char, byte, short, int, long, float and double. Say you want to store a value of true or false, you would use boolean data type. If you want to store m or f, male or female, for sex attribute, then you would use char as a data type. For integral data, which is numeric but doesn't have decimals, you might use byte, short, int or long. For floating data types, you might use float or double. All these data types consume different amount of memory. For example, byte consumes, byte consumes 1 byte of memory. It allows us to store values in the range of minus 128 to 127. Short, int and long consume 2, 4 and 8 bytes respectively. And depending upon the number of bits used in its storage, they have different range of values that they support. Float and double allow us to store values and they consume 4 and 8 bytes respectively. Char is used to store Unicode characters and it consumes 2 bytes of memory. Boolean is something special that consumes only 1 bit of memory but it allows you to store true and false as two valid values. Remember that anything in Java that is not a primitive data type is a reference. We will learn about classes, interfaces, enumerations, array in future tutorials and all these are reference data types. Whenever Java program executes, there are two different types of memories that come into play, stack memory and heap memory. Primitive data types and the program called stack resides on stack memory, whereas reference data types get the memory allocated on the heap, but their reference variables can reside on stack. When you declare a variable like int x, here x is the name of the variable. While declaring the variable, you have to be a little careful while choosing the variable names. A valid variable name in Java starts with letter of an alphabet or an underscore or a dollar sign. However, we encourage you not to use underscore and dollar in beginning of the variable names. Also, any variable name that starts with a numeric character is, is invalid. Like employee hash one contains a special character hash that is also invalid variable name. In this tutorial, we learned about what are different Java keywords and we created a sample Java program and executed it from the command prompt. We learned about the lifecycle of Java program. We saw how a .java file gets compiled into .class file and then that .class file containing the bytecode can be executed in any JVM. We also learned how to declare the variables. Finally, we also saw the different data types, primitive and reference data types in Java. In next tutorial, we will discuss in detail how to create classes, what are the access modifiers, and what are the basic tenets of object-oriented design. So stay tuned. See you in next tutorial.